Hey, welcome to Fellcraft. I'm Hammy. Hope you're well and good. And we're taking a look in part three of our new grand tournament card. First look, first impressions, first analysis series. We're having a look at the new cards released over the weekend. Six new cards or so over the weekend since the middle of last week, the 22nd of July. It is now the 27th, and we've had a whole bunch of cards released since then. We're going to jump in with our third bunch. Now, if you take a look in the top um, left and in the top middle, you can see links to playlists with a bunch of other cards. So if you missed any cards, have a look at those. But without further ado, we're going to jump straight on in and have a look at these new ones. Without the first one that was coming up today, it was from the uh, Tournament Vote. You can go to the Grand Tournament website over on uh, hearthstone.com on the Blizzard pages and you can vote. You can also see on at Play Hearthstone, vote for a card that you'd like to be released. And this was the Coliseum Manager, Inspire. Now, Inspire, if you're not familiar with this uh, new keyword, is the new mechanic, one of two new mechanics or play styles for the Grand Tournament expansion. Inspire effectively means when you play your hero power effect. So when you play your hero power, return this minion to your hand. Um, sounds a little frustrating, sounds a little bit weird, but if we take a little bit of more of a look at this Coliseum Manager, this will allow us to trade. For three mana, this has actually got a reasonable amount of health, it's got an okay attack, it's not ridiculously low. So as far as stats go, we talk about balanced minions, we talk about solid minions, sometimes when we play arena and draft on a Tuesday. and a three attack, three health, three mana minion. Think of mana equaling health, equaling attack, with no negative text effect on the card. We call that a solid minion. You could play that and it would do something. It might trade, it would be a solid board presence. This has got a lot of stats for its three mana. And Inspire is meant in this sense to be almost a negative effect, but how could you use this? How could you break it um, or perhaps make it handy to be useful? If I'm playing aggro and I drop a Colosseum Manager, if I somehow drop a Sunfury Protector, for effectively five mana, maybe a little bit less before the big tanks that we think of um, our friend the Sentient Shieldmaster, turn four, the Sludge Belcher, the Slude on turn five. We could get some Colosseum managers out nice and early. We could potentially even use them to trade, use them to sort of whittle down a board against aggro, and then we could use our hero power, return it to our hand, maybe play it again. You can bounce this card, and bounce is kind of grabbing things back to your hand. Think of the Pandaren cards, the Brewmaster cards, which let you pick something up and bring it back to your hand. You can choose uh, to bounce this Colosseum Manager through playing your hero power. How could we use that? Well, it can work in pretty much most decks. Um, you could switch it around with totems and a shaman. You could perhaps be healing things with a priest. Um, I think there's going to be some interesting ways in which people try and use this card, particularly maybe to wall or trade in the early game. So, may look as though it's a little bit awkward, that Inspire Hero Power, but I think there's some quite fun ways that that could be used. So I need to go in and have a bit more of a think about Coliseum Manager, and it'll be very interesting to see, of course, we're only maybe about 28, 30 cards or so into the 130 of this expansion. The Grand Tournament, of course, releasing in August. We're not sure when in August, but just in August. So we've got plenty of time for cards to come out. That's Coliseum Manager. That's the uh, card for today. We then have a Wilfred Fizzlebang. Now, there was a... Uh, card or two released on a Korean stream, and there was also a card released on a Korean website over the weekend. There was also, I think, three new cards released on a Taiwanese, uh, a special Hearthstone Taiwanese stream as well. So uh, all of the different nationalities of stream getting all of the different bits of love. Wilfred Fizzlebang, known if you're a fan of World of Warcraft, you may have known of the uh, uh, You Face Jaraxxus song, um, or indeed, if you're in Hearthstone and you've played against a warlock using Jaraxxus. He says, you face Jaraxxus, Eridar, Lord of the Burning Legion, um, which comes from World of Warcraft. Wilfred Fizzlebang is the, uh, let's say, slightly incompetent warlock. Very enthusiastic, slightly incompetent. He's the one who's responsible for all kinds of shenanigans with Jaraxxus in World of Warcraft. I am no lawmaster. Go and have a look for it, or just Google you face Jaraxxus and enjoy a dance-style remix of lots of World of Warcraft sound effects. But anyway, that is Wilfred Fizzlebang. He should hopefully have some cool interactions. Maybe if Jaraxxus is on the table for a Warlock and Wilfred Fizzlebang hits the table, we might see a little bit of interplay between those two. As a card, six mana. A bit on the dear side for his stats. Cards you draw from your hero power, however, cost zero. Now, that could be very interesting indeed. If a Warlock can get down Wilfred and draw a few cards... This zero could be crazy. Um, the immediate thing that springs to mind is how could you fit Wilfred into something like a handlock? Of course, you're still going to be damaging yourself 
um, unless you can somehow combo him with just a car true heart um, which I believe gives you an improved version of a hero power um, I believe justice are justice or is it just a car justice are I'm gonna go for justice are true heart um, means that uh, a warlock's uh, hero power uh, an improved version no longer actually damages you I do believe let's just uh, pull that up there we go replace your starting hero power with a better one I'm loving that we can see the warlock power just hidden underneath the Colosseum manager there hero power is now draw a card it's not draw a card and damage yourself right goodbye true heart it was good to see you. Um, so how could you perhaps squeeze that in to a handlock drawing giants in the late game drawing big eight mana minions drawing any kind of late game minions if you can draw Wilfred and throw out a life tap that would be quite cool and if the card that you draw from the light tap is beneficial how could you fit Wilfred into a warlock strategy where a your opponent can't remove it quite low health there I feel so that's a bit of a worry um, you either need him behind tanks or you need some really good lockdown you, you need to be in such a good position of control over your opponent that they're not going to be able to remove Wilfred too easily that four health is a little concern so situational yes are there ways you could try and fit him into a deck yes is he realistically going to last for more than a turn let's say that you play Wilfred and you've got eight mana, so you can effectively play Wilfred and Life Tap. You get one card that's going to be free in the late game, and you are going to be in the late game in that situation. I'm not entirely sure. You could have a relatively thin deck. You could have lots of big cost cards left, maybe in a handlock that would let you win, but situational. So there may be a few ways we can get him to work. Um, but really, to, for Wilfred to be most effective, you want him on the table, and you want it to be drawing and drawing cards, turn and turn and turn and row, and very much like Emperor Thorison. Emperor Thorison, of course, um, from Blackrock Mountain, reducing the cost of every card in your hand by one every turn he stays on the table. Wilfred does that in a very targeted way. Zero cost, but it's not as big an effect. Could Wilfred see some play in Warlocks? Yes. Um, is he situational? Yes, I would say at this point. But of course, we've still got more Grand Tournament cards to go. So we shall see what they come out with. Next, we have King's Defender. I believe this is a warrior weapon um, from having a little look around and the edges and similar. So warrior weapon um, looks pretty fun. Now, remember, of course, that warriors have got two absolutely stonking weapons in the form of Fury Winax, the Fury War Axe, of course, and then also Deathspite, Control Warrior, um, and even if you're playing something like an Arms Warrior, you're running Arcanite Reapers. You've also got Gorehow, which can fit into an arm, uh, a Weapon Warrior or a Control Warrior. Really good weapons in the Warrior Stable already. So I think this is Warrior. King's Defender, Battle Cry 3. Now, remember that Fury War Axe is 2 mana for same stats for attack and durability. Why everyone uses it in the early game to control, to remove minions and to get some nice control going so how could we possibly use this in a different way it's kind of when you take a look at it thinking if you can do a little setup for some kind of tanking taunting more like protect prop warrior deck protection um world of warcraft spec wise that's kind of the tanking warrior spec and if you think about that control is kind of like that at the moment you armor up you try and control the table you're not doing loads of damage to start with for every minion with taunt you control gain one durability. Now, you could have a whole bunch of durability on this weapon, but then the King's Defender, what's that going to let you do? It will let you, let's say, try and control a bunch of small minions. Three attack is not going to be enough to be hitting your opponent in the face loads, but if you started maybe comboing this with things like upgrade, um, a King's Defender and a couple of upgrades, if you throw it down when you've got a few taunt minions on the table, then you could well be looking at maybe a four or a five attack weapon. Uh, remember, upgrade bumps you up by one one. And then if you have a four attack weapon with an additional durability to three, if you maybe have a couple of taunting minions on the table, maybe that's five, then suddenly a four attack five durability weapon, quite nasty. That can be swinging and clearing the table very nicely, and that can also be hitting your opponent to the face for some nice damage. So let's see. King's Defender is one of those cards where if you look at it in the context of the 28 cards we've seen already, kind of similar with Wilfred, right? You think, how's that going to fit into things? I'd like to see the rest of the expansion before... A final judgment on King's Defender because in theory if Warrior gets something that summons let's say I don't know we've already got Paladin with Muster for Battle 3 1-1 one, one, um, tokens say if Warrior got a card that summoned a bunch of tokens 3-0-2 tokens with Taunt or something like that um, think of like a, a mirror image or something then suddenly King's Defender could be very very interesting indeed bumping up that durability but not going to jump into any warrior deck straight away needs the taunts to make it more effective at the moment it looks like a bit of a situational fury war axe but 
I'm sure that there are going to be some little mechanics, maybe some taunting cards that come out to make that easier to play for Warrior. We have a North Sea Kraken. Now, this um, I would firmly put into the big fun minions <laughs> pile of things. This goes like uh, the Salty Dog. The Salty Dog, of course, being the one card that can whose name can entirely be covered by Twitch emotes. <laughs> when you've got a PJ Salt, and then uh, any any dog of your choice, <laughs> any any Twitch dog emote of your choice would be absolutely fine there. But um, it's big. It's fun. Are you going to play a 9 mana, 9 attack, 7 health minion? Uh, only if it's a dragon or one of the big late game finishes, one of the legendaries that does something really heavy. Battlecraft dealing 4 damage, that's pretty solid. You can do things with that, that will let you remove things and all kinds of things. So, not awful, but I struggle at this point in time to see how that's going to be a competitive card. Apart from, of course, Arena, where in Arena, that's a pretty solid finisher. If you see one of those and you've got nothing else, you can throw that down. The 4 damage will probably pick off a minion or something in Arena. 9 attacks and health will do some damage. So, let's see if anything in the rest of the expansion makes that better. At the moment, I firmly put that in the kind of big fun card category, which is nothing wrong with that at all. Those always come out in Arena. It's like they're Force tank max in arena when you see a force tank match rolling out at the end of the game and just stomping things like I'd never see you pretty much in a, any kind of constructed deck but loads of fun anyway so we have two more cards to go for this evening's uh, little stream and of course this video if you're joining us on YouTube welcome this is of course live twitch.tv forward slash Falcon Casts Tournament Medic hits our table in the top right hand corner now this I believe uh, was one of the cards announced on the I'm going to go with Taiwanese stream rather than a Korean website um, I've forgotten which of these were where. Do go have a look at hearthpone.com or any other fantastic Hearthstone news site of your choice. So the Tournament Medic, I quite like the Tournament Medic. Um, if you have a little look, this is a, a unit. <laughs> this is a tank. This is like um, a Teenage Mutant Ninja, Oasis Snapjaw, or any of those cards which have a huge health pool and not a particularly big attack and you think you know what you could really benefit from a defender of Argus or a Sun Fury Protector I want you to be a tank and to soak up damage and so on and so forth but then when you take a more of a look at the medic four attack okay a whole bunch of stats but the attack ridiculously low so you can say well if we're going on the solid minion criteria it's solid enough inspire suddenly gets interesting inspire restores two health to your hero whenever your hero uses a power restore two health to your hero and you think actually if I throw this down if I manage to throw this down behind some kind of tank then we're cooking with gas it's going to be pretty interesting indeed a big welcome to Noodle everyone joining us on the stream and we will continue our card analysis as well and uh, if you're on the stream when we finish don't go away we'll play a game or two after and say hello so the tournament medic um, suddenly gives a lot of classes a little bit of extra healing. Now there are options already of course in Hearthstone, um, neutral options for healing, so the, uh, the Antique Heal bot being the most obvious from Goblins vs Gnomes. If you're not a healing class, if you're something like a warrior, you know, there, there are things that if you really want to you can tech in. Pallies, Priests, Shamans, Druids, Shamans not hugely so of course, in fact scratch that for Shamans, Druids certainly, all of those classes being able to throw out a few heals. Now with Tournament Medic, I can actually be topping up my health and potentially tanking at the same time if I throw down a Sun Fury Protector uh, in the mitts as well. And it's suddenly really, really tasty. So again, in Arena, I think certainly a very solid pick. Looking forward to that. In terms of how this could be going to construct it, again, let's see the rest of the expansion cards, but I feel that there could be something quite fun there. There might be a very nice way of using tournament medic um, but at the very least you could be building walls with it you could be tanking up with it uh, priests who run death lord um, i would much rather have a tournament medic on the table uh, perhaps with a sunfree potenta or an argus or something similar um, to wall up rather than that so there could be some nice uses for it for our final card the final one of the new ones and of course there will be more new ones this week we'll be trying to do videos and streams whenever we can so do not go away i really really like this card i think that priest wise there's going to be a bunch of fun sacred warrior same art very very cool actually quite liking all of this art you know for the um the grand tournament there's some really really nice art here um it's good to see some different things and i think that we're actually seeing some new art coming in now i'm not entirely sure if this has been reused or not i'm sure someone will let me know but a lot of the hearthstone art has been used previously from the world of warcraft trading card game I used to play that for a brief amount many years ago, um, but I think 
if this is not new art, then it's certainly not in the uh, original World of Warcraft trading card game, as far as I can remember. But I'll double check. Anyway, Sacred Warrior. Whenever a character is healed, gain two attack. So remember, we've got the Northshire Cleric. Whenever a minion is healed, you are gaining uh, cards. You're drawing a cards. But this time, you've got three attack, five health, and four mana. Now, we definitely call that a solid minion if we run into that in a Priest Arena draft. Um, and then suddenly, you've got... This is like um, a Light Warden but you've got this really solid body of stats, three attack and five health, and the fact that it hits the table on turn four. Now, if you think about cards like the Dark Cleric, uh, which can hit the table on turn three, Priest is suddenly getting a really solid early to early mid-game card that you can throw down, and you can be throwing heals down, you can be drawing cards, and you can be building up this Sacred Warrior, you could be powered shielding, you could be using things like Inner Fire, um, you could be using things like... Um, uh, the uh, wombo combo, you could be doubling health, you could be making attack equal to health. Suddenly, Sacred Warrior looks like a really nasty complement to an early mid game priest. And priests already had some nice options. Throwing stuff down like Dark Cleric in the early game for a priest was, was solid. So, suddenly, with Sacred Warrior, that brings priest decks forward a little bit. So, I'm looking forward to Sacred Warrior. That feels like a priest could, if not rush, then certainly put a lot more pressure on early to mid game uh, than perhaps it would have done previously. So a lot of priests, Japanese priests, Chinese priests, you name them, the controlly, tempo-y style priest, would lock people in, um, make sure that they kept the table broadly under control in the early to mid game, and then start smacking people around the face in the mid to mid late game. If it got to the really late game, you had mind control, you could be throwing dragons and all kinds of things around. I feel Sacred Warrior can pull priests forward a bit, and we've seen that trend a little bit with some cards, like in Black Rock Mountain, uh, the, the little Drake for example, and other cards like that, and then also things like uh, Resurrect, I believe, for Priest, Revive, or Resurrect, I can't quite remember the name, things that would pop uh, minions back on the table again. Lots of things pulling Priest forward in the game, and Sacred Warrior is definitely one of those, so stats nice and solid, mana cost very attainable, and the effect on the card definitely useful, great synergy with Priest heals. So really liking the look of Sacred Warrior. So those are um, the next six cards that we've seen turn up over the weekend. Um, that's going to be the end of our little card review for the moment. We're, of course, going to be uh, having little first impressions and looking at more cards for the Grand Tournament as and when they're announced, and as often as we can. So, for the end of today's little video, do come join us. You can see there, youtube.com forward slash Falcraftcasts. Uh, we have a playlist, lots of news going in there, um, a bunch of other videos, all of the Grand Tournament cards that have been released so far. I think there's 28 to 30 at this point. Have a look in the top left. You can see the playlist there with other videos in, including the Grand Tournament juicy details and a summary of the um, Foundry launch stream that Blizzard did. In the middle here, you can see all of our Hearthstone half hour content. You've got Arena, uh, two minute deck guides, um, new player Mondays, where we go through stuff from a new player friendly perspective. Um, decks, deck construction, playing arenas, sort of tips and tricks and all kinds of stuff and making our own mistakes along the way. And then in the top right, go have a look. I've forgotten the directions. Um, that is our YouTube channel. You can also see Heroes of the Storm. We do a bunch of that. We do a few other games as well, a bit of Counter-Strike and things. Primarily PC and Blizzard games are our focus and of course very much looking forward to Overwatch when that goes live as well. Um, do come join us on stream also. Twitch.tv forward slash Falcraft cast. Uh, Monday through Wednesday is actually our uh, schedule, and we try to go live between 7 30 and 8 pm UK, but we'll always tweet on at Falcraft Casts when we're going to go live. What do you think of the Grand Tournament card so far? Do you think that Inspire is a fun mechanic? Are you looking forward to all of these new interactions with Hero Powers? Do let us know if you're on YouTube in the comments below, and hopefully see you on a stream in the comments or on YouTube sometime soon. This is Falcraft, really good to have you with us, and I've been Hammy. If you're loving stream, then go away. If you're not, hopefully see you soon, and take it easy.